Hi guys, it is Miriam here again from Sweet Creations. It is just eight o'clock on Sunday night. Um, you're very welcome along again for another one of my demonstrations. So we'll just get started now in a couple of seconds. We'll get everything tallied up here and get going and hopefully things will work. I've had a little bit of a technical nightmare um, this week. As you know, my Friday night demonstration, my internet crashed on me. It actually hasn't quite come back yet. Um, so we're still waiting on it to come back and I was on at them then today and then they decided that no that's not going to work either um, so I have to wait now until they're back open tomorrow. Few of you guys watching thanks guys <laughs> like I say a little bit of a, a nightmare what I actually have to do now is I'm doing this live on my own phone I'm watching it on my husband's phone and I'm trying to um, tally up the two so we'll get going in in two seconds all right just to to get a few people going so everybody of course is very welcome along i hope everybody is doing good and um, i can see as i say a few of you guys here already so what i am doing is i'm doing actually before i do that the demonstration that i did on friday night as you know my internet crashed and um, so i did record it all again yesterday morning because i wanted you to see it loaded up onto the um onto my computer I edited and I put it all up spent the whole day doing it then I was loading it up onto Facebook and my internet crashed again anyway um it'll be fine we, I will get it up one day or I'll just redo the whole thing one of the days uh, for you so the buds and things because I know it's something that everybody was looking for it's great I can see a few of you guys there and you can hear and see me okay um just yeah Yvonne you can hear me Yvonne hopefully Martin Kelly how are you welcome along so the one that we're doing tonight is this here peony rose it's a frilled peony again a really good statement flower it's nice to I love doing these statement flowers for cakes because you really don't need a huge amount <clears throat> I have it here just I did up a little small six inch cake if it doesn't go flying on me just a little small six inch cake so you can see it on it there um and it's just a really good statement flower whether it's for wedding cakes you know or um celebration cakes of any sort because i videoed everything yesterday i now have two and then i had another display piece so i have three and tonight i'm gonna have four so <laughs> i've lots of beanie roses um but however we shall get going on this and I'll take you through step by step. Um, evening, everybody. Welcome along. It's like a little family get together here now on a Sunday night, isn't it? It's lovely. I feel I should know you all. Um, but so we'll get going. I'll get you down here onto the table. And uh, as the doctor said, and we'll get going. So we will. So just let me maneuver this little lad down. And hopefully it should be around about there. That's one swift action, isn't it? So hopefully that will work. Um, should be pretty good, I think, working. If I'm working here, we should be okay. We'll get on the old glasses. So a few of you guys watching, um, shout out where you are. I love to see where everybody is from. It's always, always lovely to see where everybody is. Okay, so like I say, it's the frilled peony rose that we're going to be making and I just want this to tally on my phone. Maybe I can come a little bit this way. So if I'm working here, we should be good. Something to look forward to, Mary. It surely is. Kathleen, how are you in the USA? USA. Uh, Lucy, how's everybody? It's been really cool all week. I've been getting messages from people all over the world. It's actually been really, really nice. Um, And it kind of I had a bit of a downer day yesterday because the internet, everything was going against me. And I, if anyone knows me, I hate losing time. I love to get a, a good day's work done and I'd worked all day and then the whole thing just crashed. So however, say la vie. So we're going to start on this and the center part, I'm going to show you how to make all the parts. Um, I don't make the stamens, as you know, but I'm going to show you how to make all the parts. So um, Marie Bay, down the real capital, it is girl, girl from Cape Town. Fantastic. And Pakistan, amazing to see you all. So we're going to start on the centre here, which is the pistols in, in the very centre of it. Um, and most, most uh, peony roses have got three. Um, welcome back, Miriam. Oh God, I feel like I've run a marathon today, Mary, so I do. Um, so most most peonies will have three pistols some will have five so get up close and personal with the peony flowers or nanny flowers that's how i learn 
flowers I get in and I look at them and I pull back all the petals just to see where everything is and um, so these are the first little bits and pieces that we're going to be making and I'm just pop out my board so we can get a look the flower paste that I'm using as always it's my own flower paste um, that I've that I have and I've made it in all the different colors and I know a few of you guys have tried it over the last few weeks um, I know a few of you have tried it over the last few weeks and it is you, you seem to be getting on very well with it which is lovely um, very nice to, to see it see it getting traveling around the world now actually it's really cool so I'm taking just a little small bit of it um, so Swati I do craft flowers but seeing you make flowers I know it can be much better Swati it just takes so much practice and so much patience and everything doesn't it I mean flowers are the thing you've got to make the petals and the uh, pistils in the center and the leaves and the coloring and the dusting and everything so I'm very fortunate I don't have a garden here you'd never believe it but I don't have a garden I can't grow flowers but I make flowers I can't grow um, but I go to my mother-in-law who's next next door to us and she's got a great garden so I'm um, kind of regular down in her the flower beds having a look and seeing what's coming up and what's in bloom cherry blossoms are at the minute they're just fantastic and I've been practicing making them um, for something that's coming up very soon and uh, I'll be telling you more a little bit more about that later on. So what I've here is just a pale green uh, paste, uh, always with the flower paste. You'll know that this differs from your sugar paste. Um, so the flower paste and any of your paste, you've got to knead it and work it to warm it up a little small bit. Remember, it's been sitting probably somewhere cool and they all contain gums and sugars. So you just need to warm it up a little bit and you can see how it becomes pliable. Um, so it's it just gets uh, nice and soft and pliable so what we need to do is we may need to make three pistols i might actually can you see it okay on the whiteboard is that okay it seems to be all right so we take a small little bit a little piece of paste about the size of a pea okay and i'll make a couple of these just so as you can see them these pistols i always make them and i leave them to dry then for a while um yvonne it's my own brand of the sweet creations flower paste is what i'm using it's my own brand of flower paste um so just roll it into a ball and into a little point okay now if you look closely at peony pistols um you have to be careful how you say that don't you if you look closely at peony pistols um they're not round they're kind of triangular so a pinch aside my hands are a bit warm tonight it's probably the pressure i've been under pinch i'm pinching the sides so i'm making it into a triangle okay um probably don't didn't i didn't lose yesterday's work yvonne no i have it on video but um yeah, me and Vodafones are not friends right now, but uh, Monday morning I'll sort them out. <laughs> um, I think they've topped up my mobile account instead of my um, internet account. And now I still have no internet tonight. So I'm currently working on my own phone and my husband's phone sitting beside her. Um, so I've just taken the wire I'm using here for the pistols. This is a 26 gauge wire. And any of you that have seen any of my other demonstrations, I cut the wire down into about four or five, just depending on what I'm doing. OK, so. A little ball of paste a little cone now I've pinched it into a triangle so hopefully you can see this I don't hold this too close to the camera because I think it actually blurs a bit but I've just gotten a small little bit of a triangle okay what I want to do then is I want to just place it onto my flatten down the very very tip and I want to place there's actually two ways you can do the tip and I'll show you both ways so I just have a bit of glue gone on the wire then I'm taking a small little ball tool and if you like, you can dip it into corn flour, but you don't need to. And I just want to cup that little tip of it a bit and let that fall over. OK, that's a pistol. OK, so nice and handy. Um, the second way and the second style of pistol that you'll often see on, on um, peonies is same again a little small ball of lime green don't worry it i would normally do the pistols in a kind of a lightish color um the uh i do them in the lightish color because we can color them up afterwards and we can we can dust them up of course that make them darker but i wouldn't make them in too dark of a color because then it's hard you can't lighten it if you understand me so there's becky dorman my old school pal um so same again 
pop in your wire, pinch it then on the three sides, okay? So you get this little triangular shape, okay? <clears throat> and then, oops, and then, and I haven't put a hook on the wire here, guys, because it, it's, it's quite a small little thing. You remember in the buds I was doing the other night, if it's only a little small piece, the hook would probably shine through. So we have the same again. We have now you could leave it like that if you wanted to. What I do then is I just twirl the top. So I've just between my two fingers curl that over. So sometimes you'll see them that they've a little curly. Okay, and that's it. That's the pistol. So you decide you want to make it's a 26 G wire. I have these uh, Maxine. You decide on this. Is it a which which type of uh, finish that you want to do on the pistol and you can do either and then decide do you want to make three or do you want to make five okay what you can do then is leave them dry or you could knit the three of them together and let them dry so that they'll be nice and tight in at the base of it all right so like I say don't do them differently just decide I like the little hook on it because you can catch that with a small bit of burgundy then afterwards is that okay Okay, so that's your pistols for it. And normally what I do is, as I always do, I just prep up everything first that I'm going to be doing. All right. The next part of it is the stamens. So these guys here, <clears throat> I buy in my stamens ready made. I don't make them unless it's for competition. I don't make stamens. Um, I mean, I send flowers all over the world. So really, I would I use thousands of stamens. It just wouldn't... Um, Actually, sorry, I wouldn't be worth living with if I had to make stamens. So I buy them in um, and they're, they're, they're different. You can get these in all sorts of different colors and everything. Um, so they're all, they're double ended. These are a lily stamen. Okay, so these happen to have a red tip, but you can get them in lots of different colors. If it's a thing you don't do many sugar flowers, buy them in white because you can always paint these if you remember from where did I paint guys the orchid so if you remember from the orchid demonstration you can mix your dust colors with alcohol or um, lemon extract and you can you can paint up the tips of them to suit the color then that you're trying to match so if you're not doing many flowers I would suggest buy them with white tips and then paint them to, uh, to suit up your to match up your color I'm just going to cut these in half OK, so I need I use three um, bunches of them. All right. George Smith. George, I'm in so much admiration. If anyone doesn't know George, um, he's one of the greatest chefs that's ever been in our country. Um, a lovely Scotsman, but he's a sort of adopted Irish. How many medals, George? He counted up his gold medals today. Um, 79, I believe, gold medals. Something to achieve, to, isn't it? I'll be competing for the rest of my life to get near that. But uh, lovely to see you, George. Incredible man. Really great man. And doing great things for the for the uh, Meals on Wheels, I think, as well. So lovely to see you. So I've left on the tape that's in the centre of these guys, OK? I just leave it on just because it's easier than you see how they fall apart the minute you take it out of the, the bunches. Uh, Miriam, how are you? Lovely to see you. So I just, I'm spreading these out. I'm just flattening them out in my hand. And that's the stamens ready then, OK? So that's it. I, I've i used three bunches of stamens here. And... um. I have just cut them all in half. You can decide you want them fuller or less stamens. You decide what you want. OK, so that's our stamens. So we'll just pop them up there because I'll need them in a little while. The petals then. So what I have is I've got my peony petal cutters. There are dozens and dozens of um, different brands of um, flower cutters. OK, Normally you'll get them for the peony flower cutters. You'll get them that there'll be different shapes and there should be because there's three, three or four different styles. Some of them have got um, different, you know, smaller ones, bigger ones. And then I have a set and it's got a mega big petal on it. So, you know, just see what you have. The one thing I would say is get a nice quality size that they're they're nice and sharp. OK, um, and then my veiner that I use for these guys is a rose petal veiner. And this is one of the best veiners that I have. Um, really, really good for petals. So they're my, my petals. My wires that I want. Again, I'm using 26G white wires. Um, so I want to um, 
I, they, I've cut them into four again, okay, just the wires, so they're prepped there. And then I'm going to just use white paste, okay, for it. So this again, this is my own brand of flower paste. Everybody has their own one that they're liking. So this is, this is the one that I use, okay. So I'm just using white for these, but obviously you can use um, any color that you want. All right. Um, so same thing again when you're going this. George, I'll get you making flowers yet. <laughs> George loves sugar, sugar flowers. <laughs> I'll get you making them. So same thing again, my white paste. I'm just kneading it up, just getting it going again, warming it up. You can see when you start with it, it's short. So it breaks quite a bit. OK, I think this camera work is is this camera angle, at least is a bit better than my last Um. I'm, I'm getting there bit by bit if I could just get internet now. OK, so I'm just kneading that up and you can see when you start to knead it up first, it is like I say, it's quite short. And then the more you work it up, the, it just gets that bit of stretch in it. You must work your paste. Now, we call this flower paste here and um, it'll be called gum, gum paste as well. Same thing. Pretty much you can use this for modeling and um, you would never cover a cake with this. That's your sugar paste or well, what's what's um commercially called fondant uh, technically it's not fondant but it's fondant or sugar paste is the roll out icing that you cover your cakes with gum paste flour paste and um, that we will use for your modeling or your flowers okay so we've warmed this up we've got our wires already here as well we've got our cutters and our veiners line yourself up so you can do um you can you can um conveyor belt these guys then so if you're making if you're making flowers you want to get in and uh Get them, get them in and get them done, says you. So normally if I'm doing flowers, I could be making a, a couple of hundred petals at a time. I'll conveyor belt them. So I'll make all the one size, then all the next size, then all the next size and so on. And I'll work it this way. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Couldn't find the link. Oh, sorry, Eliza. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully, if you guys feel free to share this into your groups as well, if you'd like to. You haven't missed, uh, Eliza. All I've done is I've made the pistols in the in the center for the center and I've just gotten my stamens ready. OK, so you'll be able to replay this video will be left on my page anyway, so you'll be able to replay and watch it. So we're going to start on the smallest one. I'm going to make one of each size for you and um, so you can see it. And if I do miss questions, um, if I do miss questions, I will come back and I'll run through them. I'll run through them at the very end. And um, the recipe for the gum paste. Now, Sheen, this is actually my own brand of flower paste that I use um, that I make. And um, it's my own brand that I've developed the recipe. So, OK, I just I don't know if you guys can see, but I can see there's a little bit of fluff on it. So what I should have done before I start, if I, I don't, I only ever wear the cotton. But what you can do is just take a little small piece of paste Quite often you'll have bits of lint and everything and they, they show up obviously in the white paste. They can show up a lot an awful lot worse. Um, where do I order my stamens from? I bring I get them from all over the world, to be honest. Uh, some of them are on my website. Um, so what I do is I clean down the board and just use that. Then that's a little scrap piece of paste and it'll clean up all the lint for you. But what I would say is um just always wear you know your cotton or t-shirt don't wear fluffy jumpers or wool woolen jumpers okay so back again if you need to you can grease your board just with a little small bit of white fat you don't need a lot on it um Rini in holland how are you hope you're all keeping well over there so we roll the paste out just in every direction. I'm using a vein and board here, which it has the little grooves in it. And I've gone on the center groove. So it's not it's not very, very deep. OK, roll your paste out. You don't want to move it on the board because you want to stay within that groove there. OK, if you don't have this white plate. Oh, OK, I'll show you, Noshin, how to do it with the twiddle effect as well. So if you don't have the veining board, I think that's what you're asking. And um, I'll show you how to do the twiddle method and um, you can use it. So roll it out as thin as you're comfortable. And if you're just starting on sugar flowers, go a little bit thicker and um, just till you get comfortable using it. My cutter then goes down. So the vein, the groove is going up the center. Then I use my acrylic block, as I always do, because quite often um uh you your board or your cutters might well be twisted a little small bit so 
Just cut that down, hold the cutter then, lift the paste up and over. And then it's cut and a nice clean cut for you. Okay, take off your cutter, leave it on the board. Now I turn it at a 90 degree angle and I place on my acrylic block and I use these all of the time uh, for, for lots and lots of different things to do. So we, I'm right handed. So the end of the petal is out my right hand side. OK, um, really all's good here. All is very good. We're all healthy and well. And that's the aim. That is my absolute aim for the next few weeks for everyone to stay well. Um, everything else will fall back into place. That's my thing. So I've taken my wire now. And I'm pushing, I'm just holding down the acrylic and with my right hand, I push and twist, push and twist, push and twist. You may and may not be able to see it on the camera. And um, the wire has gone in about a third of the way. OK, when you get used to making flowers, you can um, you can not insert the wire so much. Or if you are doing competition, don't insert it so much. All right. Lift off your acrylic block now. You can lift off your paste and you can see now. Now, I want to show you the wire has come out at the back. That's OK. Don't scrap it. But you can see the vein. Once we place it in the little vein or that, I'll get rid of it. If the wire pops out at the back, take for yourself. Um, I use um, I use uh, angle tweezers. Press the, wire, press the wire back down in. Pinch it over so you're recreating that vein. So, you know, don't kind of, if it's popped out, don't scrap the petal. It's not scrap. And there you go. It's back in. OK. If you're having problems that the um, the wires keep on popping out and they're, they're just poking out the whole time on you. What it basically means is that you're using too heavy a wire. So the wires will start just pop over this so it keeps fresh. So the wires will start at a number 18. Uh, they'll go up 20, 22, 24, all the way up to 35. The higher the number, the finer the wire. OK, um, so if, for example, this is a 26 G wire, but if I was doing these petals finer, finer, like say for a competition, I'd use maybe a 28 or 30. But it is a problem. Some people say the wires keep poking out. Just drop a size as in if you're using a 26, come up to a 28. So use a finer wire. OK, lay now your petal onto your rose veiner. And because this comes in, I just tuck that in under there. I haven't used corn flour unless I really need to. Press it down, not too heavy. It's sugar, it's not concrete. Right, guys? Hello, Maria Brady down in Cork. Um, so press it down so you get the veins of the petal. Lift it off. You can see now the veins. Lucky, lucky. Um, and on the front and the back. OK, what we want to do then now, this is the smallest. Uh, this is the smallest petal that we're doing. So this is the center petals in beside. It's these guys here I'm making. OK, so these are kind of unfurling. They're still opening up. They're not all fully open. So remember, your petals in the flower are going to be at different stages. I'll take then my ball tool and I always prefer a uh, steel ball tool and um, they're colder. My hands are hot tonight, so they're they're colder um, and they work better. I prefer them at least. I'm running over the edges. Just want to tidy off those straight, those cut edges. I'm running around the top. OK, now peony rose, the petals go in. In a rose, a rose rose, the petals come out. OK, so if you look at my rose demo that's on the um, my rose demo that's on the, the page here as well that I did, uh, you can watch it at any time it's on the page, but they're curled outwards. So we want to curl these in. So I've softened out all the petals here. Now, here's what you do. You push out and you pull back in. So when I push out, I'm not leaving the petals. So my, my ball tool is still in contact with the paste. Hopefully you can see. Not apply too much pressure and push back in and push pull back in. So that cups cups in the petals. You can do this same thing with uh, like a daily or that. You can do the same with a Dresden tool if you wish. So you know the Dresden. OK, see that red? That's from uh, the time I, I was in. I was lucky enough to be on the Olympics, the Irish Olympics team. Um, and all my my tools had the red tape on them. Not the sports Olympics. Now, I, I wouldn't win anything for sprinting, but for food, food Olympics. Actually, that was a question. Um, Give me a fun fact about you. So my fun fact is I was, I have two. My fun fact is I was on the Irish team at the Olympics with Mr. George Smith that we're talking about. And my second one is I once did a parachute jump. So give me a fun fact on you guys.
So that's that petal. That's the center one. I curl it in a little small bit so it's still unfurling. Okay. And I hang it up this way. So I make a little hook and hang it from cooling racks or, or you know, a little rack or something like that. I have actually, you know yourself, lads, you often hang them out with lamps as I'm doing exactly now. Or you can, your clothes dryer or cooling racks or some sort of a little, uh, little wire like this. Okay, so that's the first petal. You will make six or eight of those guys, okay? The fuller you want it, the more you make, but I make usually about six or eight, okay? The next one we want is this size here. So we're going to do it again. Uh, who asked me earlier about uh, the second method? So if you don't have a veining board, I'm going to show you this method now, and this is the twiddling method, okay? Um, nice and easy to do. Uh, Mary, um, I... I'm not sure, I'll have to translate, but from Colombia, Colombia, I think, how are you? Um, so, so not concentrated, go me my motto when I make sugar flowers. Love the sugar, it's not, oh yeah, it's sugar, it's not concrete. Absolutely, it's sugar, it's not concrete. Okay, so let's say you don't have the ve veining board. What you will do is you'll take your wire, okay? Yeah, it's uh, sugar, it's not concrete. You've been hot air ballooning. That is my absolute um, bucket list, top of my bucket list, Cheryl. And uh, I missed an opportunity to go because I was impatient. And my husband, don't tell him I told you, but he was going to propose to me in a hot air balloon. And then I just got very impatient and then he didn't do it. So I missed my trip. Um, so I've taken a little small piece of paste. I'm coming down, so if this is my cutter, I want the wire to be about halfway in. So I'm coming down to there. Between my thumb and my middle finger, I roll. And as I roll, I pull up along the wire. So this is called twiddling. You'll hear this plenty. You can do it for leaves, petals, anything at all. Okay, so now my wire is coated in, in paste. OK, I would go a lot finer. I want you to be able to see this, but go a good bit finer. Um, and uh, I heard you ran 100 meter sprint. I tell you one thing, Marion, I didn't run, run 100 meter sprint. Um, you can go an awful lot finer just when you get used to these. But I, I just want to be sure that you can see it. So that's a twiddle. We'll pop that down and just place on our acrylic block. OK, and then we'll roll out our paste. So I don't want to use the grooves. This is just on my plain board, if you like. OK, so just roll this out as fine as you'd like to go on it. OK. So Rashika, this is the twiddling. Yes. OK, so very, very easy. Takes a little bit of doing. So you, you twist and you pull up, twist and pull up and take off the excess then to the top. Roll your paste out now. OK, little tip for you. When you roll your paste out, this will always have started to dry because it's exposed to the air. If you want to get a really, really clean cut, OK, turn your paste over. Now you've got fresh paste facing up and you want to, um, a bit of lint in it, uh, you want, you'll get a much cleaner cut. So press down again, lift off your paste, OK, and you get a clean cut. You skydived in Australia. Oh, I, I love I love fun facts. Love them. OK, pop this out. Now, turn it upside down. We're going to then take our twiddled piece of paste and we're going to just glue up the back one side of it at least. Not too much glue. Don't over glue. Do the glue. Pop it down. OK. Um, so let me just grab... Um, do I have one handy? So I just want to show you how this would also work on a leaf, okay? So you've you've glued down there just very lightly, um, and then you will put it into your veiner and you'll vein it. If, for example, this was a leaf, so ignore the shape that it's a petal shape, if it was a leaf. You'll put it down and you want to make sure that the twiddled part is up that central vein. So it's going up there. Don't have it off center. Just just so you know if, if it was a leaf. All right. Um. <clears throat> Held on to Garth Brooks leg. <laughs> we won't ask Mary. <laughs> OK, so I've back in here. So I've twiddled up. I've put it onto the back of the petal. Pop it into your veiner as you did before. Pop on the top, 
press it, it's sugar, it's not concrete. Okay, snorkeled on the Great Barrier Reef. Fabulous, fabulous. I couldn't do it. I'm claustrophobic, so I couldn't snorkel, but I'd watch. Okay, so press down now. Then we have, there you go. And you should not be able to see the twiddle at the back at all okay so as you get used to this the finer you go on the twiddle the better but this is this is just that's another way of doing it if you don't have the board there's the twiddle but you can barely barely see it okay so that's how you make this one so this is a say is our second size petal we're going to just soften out the edges again okay so soften out all those edges all right again we just want to ruffle the top. The tops of the peonies are nice and ruffled. You know, they're frilly, frilly. We want to cup it in because so peony flowers, peony flowers come in, roses go out. So what we do is with our ball tool, we push out and pull back in. And I'm applying a little bit of pressure, but not too much. So again, push out, pull back in. OK, and do it two or three times. So that cups in. Now, my first peony petal, so that was this size, I hang upside down. And let it dry this way okay this one now you all know the farmers you know my very expensive farmers that i use okay these are the farmers that you can buy um and this is um can be used for gerber yes um this one here is the farmers that you can buy this one here very expensive piece of kit and um, double piece of tin foil and it's done over a christmas bauble so you get that nice cup or you can dip it in here and do it. And then my inherited silver spoons, uh, soup spoons. These are really great and they are um, just a really deep bowl on them. So I'd often look in charity shops or, you know, uh, auctions or whatever. Or get on to the old auntie. It'd be nice to her. So I'm popping the, the petal in there because I want it to be cupped and just leave it dry in the spoon or in the the foil, foil form or whichever you want. All right. These are great. But like I always say, you only get a couple of each size in the pack and quite often you need a few of them. So I, I have a box of formers for roses and I use these all the time. OK, so that's our second size petal. Again, you'll make six or eight of those guys. Um, and then our last size petal, which is this one here, it's the big one. So there are three sizes, but you want them to be graduating up. The first one is generally your little frilly lad and then they graduate up in size a little bit. If I do miss any questions, guys, as I'm going along, I will go back at the very end um, and I'll uh, I'll go through them all and answer them. Is that OK? Can we use the gerber cutters for the first pet? Um, couldn't you use the gerber cutter? Probably not frilly enough, I'd say. Um, you could use a rose petal. You could use a rose petal cutter and you could really frill the edges of it and then pull in the edges. You know, the rose petal is just your teardrop cutter. That would probably work. The gerber might be a little bit too narrow, I think. Um, can you use an apple tray? Absolutely. The only thing with the apple tray is they're quite big cavities in it. So if your petal is small, you won't get such a, a cup on it. Uh, do you know if the, the apple tray is nearly as big again? All right. So for our third petal again, is everyone OK on the twiddle method? I can show you again at the end if you'd like anyway, if you need me to redo it. But this video will be saved and it's here for you guys whenever you need it. Um, it, it'll be here on the page so you can certainly share it into all your groups and watch it. All right. So for the third one, I've just gone back onto the veining board now this time. All right. Um, hopefully we're OK. Yep. And my bigger, biggest cutter now, cutter now. And people are asking me, where do I buy cutters and where do I buy veiners? Some of them I, I have, you know, that I sell online. Some of them I, I really I buy them all over the place. Um. Sometimes we've some great pages here in Ireland that people are doing a clear out um, and they would be selling off cutters. I've had a couple of friends have have retired from the business and I've gotten bits and pieces off them. So I kind of and sometimes you get bits of cutters that nobody knows what they are. Um, so you can you can sometimes get them. So I've turned it at a 90 degree angle, place on my acrylic block again. Um, and what I should have said was the wires when I cut them. So I cut the length of wire in four or five. I always cut the wire at 45 degree angle, not at a 90 degree angle. If you go at 45, it just means you have a pinpoint on the end of it. 
um, how much so no sheen the very first petal that I did I'll run through them now again the very first petal that I did I, I make about six or eight I make about six or eight of each size actually to be honest um, so you get a nice full peony it depends how full you want to, to do it and if you're doing these for cakes it also depends on the price that you're going to get paid um, so you know you want to be certain that you can you're you're going to make a profit on it as well so um what you can do a little trick you can do is if you were if you were doing it for a cake a commercial cake you could start on one two and then get a bigger cutter so these are bigger will give you bigger petals it'll fill your flower out a good bit quicker so like i say it just depends on on a lot of factors if i was doing these for competition in all i would probably have 60 70 petals in my peony uh, so i'd have quite a few in it so I'm just popping this into the veiner again and I'm pressing on the top, okay? So yeah, no sheen, is that okay? So about six or eight of each one, like I say, just depending on what you're getting. So we've got the nice veins in it there, all right? And um, this veiner here is one I bought many years ago from a girl and unfortunately she doesn't make them anymore. So I, there's no point in me saying where I got it. Um, but there is some really good rose rose veiners. I would invest in a good rose veiner um, because it's it's the most used one. It'll work for all sorts of flowers. And um, there's one that I have, it's a tea rose, nice small little veiner so we soften out the edges again okay um and then frill the top so let's say if this was just a rose petal shape as uh, someone was asking me there about the gerbera you could just over frill your rose petal top and it will give you the same kind of effect we want to cup it in push out pull in so what i'm doing is just if you missed pushing out but i'm keeping in contact with the paste i'm not going off so I'm pushing out and then press a little bit and pull in. If you don't have the ball tool, you can use your Dresden tool as well. And it will just give you that little cup. All right. These guys then I'm going to set, set um, this in the silver spoon. So we'll use my mother's silver. All right. And you let it set this way. So I've done six. Six. And this one's on the lamp. Six. So they're my three sizes, okay? That's the petals. So normally what I would do is I'll make these and I will um leave them leave them to um leave them to dry generally overnight. Now I know some sugar flowers, what they do is they actually dust as while they're still wet. Personally, I prefer to leave them to dry to dust, just that I find it's a little bit easier to um to handle. Okay, so what we want to do then is we want to start with our dusting. All right. And what I do is just let me get them here for you. So I have a little dusting box, which is what I use all the time. OK, so I'm going to bring in the pistols. And I'm going to bring in the petals that I've made. So I've already pre-made, as I said to you, I've, I made yesterday and I videoed then the videos uh, crashed on my Internet and me and Vodafone have fallen out. We're not friends. We're not friends anymore. So my dust and colours are, I don't have a set brand of, of uh, dust that I like. Okay, so I just want to be certain you can all see. So what I'm using is I'm using a green and a lime. Lime would be one of the most uh, used ones. I'm using for this one, this is a buttermilk colour and a mango. All right. So what I do is I'll just take a little bit of each. So buttermilk. Is a lovely rich yellow and I don't have a set brand that I that I like um, I'm going to take a little small bit of mango a teeny bit there's probably actually enough there and then I just want to get a little small bit of peach as well okay so I generally I buy these for the color you know it just depends on the color that it is so a little bit of peach and these are your flower dusts so make sure when you're buying flower dusts and um, that they're not luster there's no shine on them okay flowers are flower petals are not shiny shiny they they may have a slight sheen but you want to be certain they're not lusters you can see the lime green is one of my favorites I love Okay, and then I have enough green, I have enough of the dark green out. And the only other colour that I want is, I just want a small little bit of burgundy as well. Okay, 
So I know some of you during the week have been sending me pictures of the flowers that you've been making. It's amazing. There, there's been pictures coming in from all over the world of people that have started to make flowers and uh, dug out their, their flower equipment and tools, which is really nice. It's lovely. And thank you so much to everybody who did message me and, and send me in the pictures. OK, so let's start on the petals then. So this is my first one and you can see they look like they're unfurling. So I'm going to blend my yellows, my peach, my yellows together and you can just blend up your own colour. And all I'm going to do is I'm coming just, I use flat brushes, OK, so I'm just coming. That's it. That's all I'm coming up and you might kind of think oh, it's not very much on it, but uh, you don't want to and don't blow on your petals, please. Remember, they're going onto cakes so you can shake off or you can get a little puff or a little air, air um, balloon and puff off the end of it. So you're just coming up there. I just want to see pockets of colours. And basically what I do now is I just come up along about kind of halfways. It's in the middle and it's halfways. Um, mine too. It's lovely to see you all. Is everyone having a good enough week? We're all doing not too bad. I hope you are. You get it, get an old down day here and there, don't you? And then you just get up and put on your big girl pants and get on with it, don't we? It'll all fall back into place. It'll all happen. The, the, the aim is to stay well. That is the absolute aim for us and our families to stay well. Everything else will be okay, guys. Okay. So I'm just dusting up each one. So that's the first size done. And you can see these are none of them match. Some of them are a little bit more open. And some of them are a bit more closed. What you can do if you like, take a little bit of that darker one and you can catch an odd little tip. So obviously I'm using like yellows and creams here. Um, you can match these in. Now there's the thing, if you were doing these, let's say for a wedding, um, can I go over how the bride can store the sugar flower spirit? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I don't like plastic. I will. I'll talk in two seconds, Varsha, uh, about that. Um so if you were matching these on for a cake, let's say, for example, the brides, the, the colours you were trying to match were a dark, strong colour. Um, what I would do is I would dust like this. So I'd make them in. Let's say, for example, you were matching purple. Right. Strong colour, my favourite colour. So let's say you are matching purple. What I would actually do is I'd make the petals in like a lilac -y sort of. Now, you want to be careful on the lilac colours that you buy. As I'm talking, I'm moving on now to the next size petal. OK, so this is the medium one. So what I would do is I'd make the petals in like a lilac colour. And then I would do my dusting like this in your purples, because now purple, as I say, it's my favourite colour. Um, I just see a little, a little uh, wire just sticking out here. I'm just going to catch that just off my work table. I'm just snipping it. So it's clean. OK, um, so, yeah, I would um, if if you're doing a cake with with the purple flowers, because it's such a strong color, mostly what what you will see is that you'll see purple. So if you actually do shades of the purple, I think it looks a lot better. In, in another lifetime, I used to be a, a wedding florist and I used to do wedding flowers. And um, so if it was somebody with a strong kind of color, I would tend to use shades of that color and it had blended in an awful lot better um, for it. And you still have all the tones. With purple, it's actually one of the harder colours because quite a lot of purple colours will photograph blue and that's in dresses and cakes and icing and everything else. And they'll photograph it. They'll photograph blue. So a little tip for you. If you're making icing and I've done purple icing and next thing you go in and it's blue. Has that ever happened to anybody? If that happens as you're colouring your icing. So as you're mixing in and we use in the sugar craft, you know, all the gel colours and everything that we use. Um, so you'll take your purple colour, you'll add it into your icing. Along with it, put in a pinch of bread soda. Does everybody know what bread soda is? It's it's a cream of tartar bread soda. Put a pinch of that into your icing as you're mixing your colour through and it seizes the colour and it will hold it so it won't fade. Top tip. No charge. No charge. You can have that advice. OK. Uh, so it just it's really good on it. So Varsha, how do you so how do you tell your bride how to store the their flowers? OK. 
Personally, when I'm storing the flowers, I store them in cardboard boxes. I'm not a big fan of the plastic boxes just for the simple reason that they can sweat and the flowers can't breathe. So I would prefer like a cake box. That's your ideal. That'll work. You can line it then with a couple of sheets of bubble wrap in the bottom. So you've got a little bit of a cushion and then over the bubble wrap, put on like tissue or, you know, Kleenex tissues or something like that in it. Um, and line it with that so that the flowers won't be in direct contact with the bubble wrap and then you can pop your flowers into the box here and there if it's going to travel you can put in little squares of tissue or bubble wrap not cotton wool don't use cotton wool because the treads of the cotton wool can actually snag on the flowers and you can end up with these little treads on it so if you um pop in little bits of tissue especially where you have wired flowers so for example if this flower this is the peony we're doing so if this was to travel you know that noise in the back of the car ah. right so what i would do is i put in bits of tissue in there in there in there now i can travel it when i get to the venue take it all out okay so what to store it if they want to store it long term well first of all i'd say don't hide it away because it's nice they can be seen where's the point in putting it in a box you know as my mother says up in up in auntie mary's room behind the wallpaper where's the point put it out on on show let it be seen and um, what i would do is i'd put it into a glass cabinet and i would uh um away from direct sunlight and the damp or humidity that's what can um soften it that's what can do the most damage to it and um, put it in glass cabinet don't let the dust at it don't let the sunlight because the sunlight can fade your colors and um it, it they keep for years and years and years i have a little bit of a rough edge there so if you just rub your finger on that okay sorry i i'm not sure if my hands move um really fast i'm a really fast worker and sometimes it's uh Sometimes I'm like, slow down, <laughs> slow down. So, yes, so to, if they want to store them in a box, I would say get a big cardboard box like your cake box, line it with bubble wrap, line it with tissue and pop on the flowers onto it. But don't hide them away. Put them out on show and um, tell them to put them out on show, lads. And then when their friends come say, oh, where'd you get the lovely flowers? Who did them? Oh, Miriam from Sweet Creations did those. God, I must get on to her and I'd get an order. <laughs> so... You know, let them put them out on show. Stick in your business card with them. <laughs> free advertising, lads. Don't don't ever hide away from free advertising. OK, so we've lots of petals. I have enough there to make two flowers. That's the petals done. OK, then what we do is we want to colour up the pistols. These are the pistols that I made. And again, this video is there so you can rewind and see at the beginning. I just have these little lads here, which are matchy matchy. OK, I'm going to take my green brush. I thought the other day this old brush is it's battered. It's like myself. And I just thought maybe I should get a new one. But, you know, it's it's like that. Uh, it's a bit like the husband's. Sure, you have them this long. I may as well hold on to them. And it still works. So I'm just brushing up two thirds of the way. I'm not tipping the top of it just at the minute. OK, so I'm just coming around. This is with the darker green. You can blend in a little bit of the lime if you want. Okay, is that a Varsha? That's okay. That that answers your question for you. If you've any questions, some people don't like to ask them on the on the live videos. That's not a problem. Message the page here. I'm more than happy to uh, to answer them later on. That's not a problem. Okay, so we've a little bit of green. So now you can see I made this in the lighter green, and you can always darken it up a little bit. Then what I want is a tip of burgundy, just a little tip. Okay. Um, sugar flowers you've missed a lot that's fine you can go back and you can always watch I'm using a flat brush and I'm just catching it here on the corners of the little edges and I'm catching it on the tip can you see so don't leave it just flat you know make a little bit of a statement from it so a little bit of burgundy and if I was only starting out and I was buying two colours it would be the lime green and uh, burgundy they would be my two colours of choice and white because you can make lots so that's all i'm doing there okay what sugar paste elaine this is the my own brand of flower paste it's the sweet creations flower paste this one here and if anyone is looking it's on my website is sweetcreations.ie so you're welcome to have an owl nosy over there and have a look 
So I'm just catching the corners, I'm catching the tip, that's it, that's all you have to do on the pistols. So that's our colouring up done. As I say, I prefer to colour colour um, when they're dry. All right. So let me see a question. Slatina, you missed the start. How dare you? Um, no, Sheen, I made some petals, but the wire came out. So go a finer petal. You need to go on, on a finer petal. Probably it's too thick on it. Okay, so let's put this together then. Um, we're going to use our florist tape. Okay, so you should see here then. So let's let me show you here. So florist tape, it basically comes in lots and lots of different colors. Um, Rene, would the glass from the picture frame use? Uh, personally, I wouldn't put glass anywhere near anywhere near my products and um, just for the simple reason if you got little splinters or little uh, things acrylic it's it won't break it's one of those things glass you can try but I, I, glass also I think it'll stick to it a lot more could I explain what stamens I'm doing absolutely yeah so the stamens that I have they're the lily stamens okay the ones I've used are the red stamens so they've got that little long piece here on the end of it uh, Deborah so you can if I was buying stamens I would buy them maybe in white and then you can paint up the little tips of them I've taken three bunches and I've cut each bunch in half all right so they're just lily stamens um, and you can buy there is I do have some on the website I haven't very many on it but you can buy stamens all over any of your good suppliers all right so another question do my petals fall off the wire once dry what do I do to rescue them no they don't fall off once they're dry if you dip your wire in glue and then it uh, Varsha are you using fondant or are you using flower paste so can you just tell me that um they don't fall off um so who asked me yeah Rene I hope that's okay on the glass personally I would just wouldn't use glass I don't have glass anywhere in the bakery or anywhere in the place that I'm working unless it's pint but that's different <laughs> no it's not I don't have glass anywhere it's just too dangerous um so our florist wire now that we're going to use to tape it together um this is a paper florist wire so it'll come in a whole different range of colors this here is called full width flower a uh, full width tape okay and then this here is called half width tape no difference you pick your color um full width tape if you're going to tape up flowers with this you'll actually cut it in half half width tape you get two rolls in the packet and it's already cut so it's it's a kind of the half width tape you can't get in so many colors it's a little bit more limited but if you do want to cut your tape what you can do is you can use this is the gadget that i like okay so your wire often comes through the paste. If your wire is coming through the paste, it's probably too thick a wire that you're using. So for example, Elaine, if you use fondant, okay, then that's your problem machine. Okay, let me go through these one by one. So uh, Varsha is asking, do my petals fall off the wire? I would say you may be using fondant. No, Sheen, I use fondant with those. No, fondant, you'll never roll it as thin. Even if you add in the gum trag, you need to use a gum paste or a flower paste. Gum paste and flower paste both have a very high level of gum in it um, and they will roll out much, much thinner and they'll dry better for you. OK, let me just fly through a few of these. Elaine, my wire comes out through the paste. So, Elaine, drop your size. So if you're using, for example, a 26 gauge wire, um, I would go to a 28 gauge wire or 30 if your nerves will let you um, and it shouldn't poke through. Then it's too thick a wire that you're using. Do I make my cakes or just flowers? I retired from making cakes three times. Um, five years ago, I think I retired from making cakes. I did them for years and years and years. Um, now I only have my online site and I make sugar flowers and I post them all over the world and I do edible images and all sorts of toppers. That's what I do now. Um, if anybody asks, I am retired because <laughs> my nieces and nephews are all coming up to 21st and everything. I'm I'm gone. Uh, Renshaw modeling paste as I do vegan and eggless cakes. OK, yes. Yeah, so this and um, somebody asked me this. It may have been you the other day. Versha, um, my flour paste has dried egg in it, so it's not suitable for vegans. Um, try the Renshaw flour paste. Maybe it's slightly different and it'll roll a little bit thinner for you. OK. 
Thank you very much from Hungary. You're very welcome, Futo. What is the size of the wire for the petals I've used? 26 gauge. Um, and for the pistols I've used, actually all 26 gauge tonight is what I've used. Okay. Uh, sugar flowers. When I use 50-50 flower paste and found the tend to fall, that's the problem. That's exactly the problem there. Use only flower paste. Do not mix it. It just won't work. Very simple. Just won't work. Can flower paste be used for modeling figures too? Yes. Um, if I'm not wrong, you mentioned at the start. Sorry, it's a bit out of context. Yeah, no problem, Rashika. Yes, uh, flower paste can be used for modeling. No problem. Elaine Crohn squares, excellent. Very, very good paste. A little bit fragile when it dries, but a very good squares uh, paste. There's lots of different flower paste. There's so many different flower pastes out there. So is that okay? That's lots of questions. Great to see lots of questions. And like I say, if you don't like to ask on, on the live, that's not a problem. Send me a message on the page. All right, so let's tape this up together then. So I'm going to use the half width tape. What you need to do is decide is a dark green. So look at the stems. I've been teaching myself cherry blossoms uh, during the week and uh, they're very interesting to make. You will see. And, and I need to say that to you that on um, next Friday, we have something very, very special coming up on a, pay a group page. A lot of you are on there already. Cake Artists United the Global Isolation Room. Look it up or I'll put a link for it up at the end of the video. Um, and we've something very special coming up on next Friday. So if you're into sugar flowers, you will love this. What we're, What's going to be happening. Um, so be sure and look it up. Don't go away now. Don't leave me. You can look after. So. To tape this up, I want to what I call is a carrier wire, okay? So this is a, a 20 gauge wire. And um, basically all that it is, is that it's just a heavier wire where I'm going to have lots of petals. And I want it to be able to, you know, take, because I've made the petals on fine wire, so I want them to be able to take it. So I just have a carrier wire that I use for the center, okay? And this is what we're, this is the aim, guys. This is the aim. OK, so hope that answers everybody's questions. If you do, if not, shout again. So I'm taking my tape and when you start on the tape, you need to stretch it and that releases the glue. Pop it onto your carrier wire. So I've got it started. First up, I take my pistols. OK, so the, the page on on uh, the group, at least, is Cake Artists United, the global isolation room. If you pop in a request to join, well, we'll see. We might let you in. We'll have a think about it. Um, and it's it's a very, very lovely group, really lovely group started by Shell Robinson. Um, and it's got so many tutorials we've been sharing like mad to keep everyone occupied. So I've added on my three pistols. I can never drill my petal. Drill, frill, frill a lane. Um, OK, if, if you're not, petals are not frilling. All you've got to do is you've got to have your ball tool half on the paste, half off the paste um, and just go over and back and over and back. I knew what you meant, Elaine. <laughs> I translate um, half on the paste and half off the paste. If it's a thing that your ball tool is too far in on the petal, it's probably cupping in on you. So half on the edge, half off. So I've added on my three pistols onto the wire. I'm pulling down the wires just to get them nice and tight, nice and snug there. All right. Now I'm going to add on my stamens. So these are my lily stamens. So I add on a little bunch and I just do one at a time. Okay. Add on the next one. And as I'm adding them on, now I can take off my tape. Okay, so just with a scalpel and just work it away from you. This is a surgical, surgical scalpel, so they are quite dangerous. Okay. Pop it back upright. Look at this for a mess. Pop that on. Let's tidy those in. There's always a couple of little escapees, but that's all right. They can be added in. So my 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 stamens are higher than my pistols. OK. And pop on the next set. And I've I've got three bunches, as I say, and I've cut them in half. Pop it on here. So what you want to do is you want to look down into it and where do you need it? So you need you know where you need another one. And actually, if I'm doing these for competition work, I'll work through my phone, which sounds a bit crazy. But as I'm doing it and as I've done a stage, I'll put on the camera on my phone and I look at it through the phone, not 
not with the naked eye, but through the phone. And it's unbelievable the difference. You, you see the flaws and you see where things are off center. Um, and that and I know the judges I, I don't know if any of the guys are on watching but I know the judges um, they will judge with a flashlight and it is crazy the flaws that shine up when you're working on a flashlight with a flashlight at least okay may not need all six if you don't that's fine you work until it's as full as you're happy with it all right so you can see and because once you have them tightened in you can kind of we'll fill in that little lab there Okay, can tread be used in substitute? Kimmy, yes, tread can be used instead of stamens, absolutely. Um, you can you can wind the tread around your fingers. If you have a look, Kimmy, on, I have a video that I did a couple of weeks ago on my Cosmos flowers and I showed how to make stamens out of tread. So absolutely it can be. The one thing I would say is if you're doing competition work and you're using thread for your stamens, it must be cotton thread. It can't be polyester, but that's only for competition work. I don't know if any of you guys compete. Um, we have we had the Irish Sugarcraft show back in the end of March and we have a fantastic show coming up in November. If anyone fancies a trip to the real capital of, Do of Ireland, down to Cork, um, it's right at Cork Airport and it's it's the chocolate, Maria McDonald or, or uh, somebody help me, chocolate and bacon weekend and there'll be sugarcraft competitions, sugarcraft stands and it'll be on the end of November uh, in the Cork International Hotel. A really, really lovely weekend. Great crack, really great crack. Crack in Ireland means a different thing, by the way, to crack everywhere else in the world. So they're taped on. Make sure they're nice and secure. What you can do now, I'm just going to bend that. Just you can fluff them out then a little small bit. And you can you've got your center. Is that OK? So go as, as comfortable as you are. I mean, you know, you you fill it in with however many that you need to. I'm just going to cut off the end of this. Not I would normally leave it fairly long, but. It's just kind of getting in my way for the camera for you. So I just want to be sure you can see it. All right. Chocolate and bacon weekend, Maria McDermott. And it's on the last weekend of uh, Slatina. You need to come to Cork. Um, Sugar flowers planning on next year. First time with the flowers. Excellent. Excellent. Compete, guys. Put in competition entries. It's the greatest way to learn. Um, so it is. And you must talk to the judges, whether you win, lose or draw, talk to the judges, get your critiques. And honestly, I've been competing for almost 40 years um, and I learn so much every time I compete. Absolutely. I meant to show you this little gadget here. If you can only get the um, Slatina. So Slatina's coming to Cork. Excellent. Um, if you can only get the full width tape and this little gadget here is for cutting your tape. I meant to show you this. Basically, down in it there's razor blades here in it okay you can take it screw the unscrew this you can take out one or two blades if you want to do that um and it's just a great little little um thing first i love cork cork i i went to school in cork i adore the city i adore the people down there they really are pretty special bunch of people um so yeah you could all plan a, a road trip to to cork for the end of november hopefully Hopefully, hopefully. How about that, guys? And then, well, we could do Birmingham at the beginning of November. That's Cake International. Then we could go to Cork at the end of November. And then, what's up? what else is on? I'm not sure what other shows. So I'm just popping the tape in at the back. Pull it through. Don't put your hands in there. The Welsh Cake Shows, Latina, that's coming up, I'm sure, next February, March. So, Sorry. I've been not explaining. So I've popped in my tape here, close it over, right? And then all you do is you pull and look, ta -da -da -da, and it cuts it for you. So just pull that through and that's it. And it cuts. So then now I would say there's probably a little bit of glue on mine there if, if it's not cutting exactly straight for you. Um, possibly you've got a small little bit of glue and it's just run your tweezers just down along it just to get rid of that glue. But it's a great little piece of equipment for cutting it off. All right. Um, so where, where are the other shows? Have May, May in Wales. May for Wales. Excellent. Excellent. So the Welsh cake show that I was meant to go to last year. And then the ferry decided uh, not to sail 
the day before so I was sitting here with my van loaded competition pieces loaded everything and I didn't get going but anyway I saw it from far as Latina next year for sure okay so we've got all our stamens and our, our pistols done. Now we want to add in the petals. So the very first petals are these little small fellas here. So these ones, now I've got more than six, but it's like I say, you can add in a few extras if you want to. All right. Dipti, it looks easy when you do it. Dipti, you just got to give them a shot. So I'm popping on my tape. Make sure that's secured. I'm right handed. So my left hand is holding the tape and it's pulling it out to release the glue. I need to add in these petals. So popping, I'm bending here, but I'm holding it where the wire is there. And I'm popping that in. Turn it around. Get on your next petal. What is the ribbon cutter called? A florist tape. It's from Gem, J-E-M. And it's a florist tape and ribbon shredder. Um, I'm not sure if there's other brands. There is a couple of other brands, I think. All right. That, that'll be my favorite one. So I'm just adding these guys in um, and I just want to pop them in the center. The, I'm only taping now at the bottom of the petal, OK? And just until you're happy with it. So now can you start to see while we think, well, you haven't really dusted up very much, but you can see the pockets of it. Um, so you can still see plenty down on it. It's funny, isn't it? Some people hate making sugar flowers. Like really, I know some of the finest, finest sugar crafters and they hate flowers because they're slow and they're time consuming. Um, they're my favourite part. So, okay. So I probably don't need those two. Tie this off. And again, what you can do is you can just tighten those lads down. Pulling that wire. Remember, it's sugar, it's not concrete. Pull this down. Tighten those up. And just till you're happy. And what I would do then is just run my tape. Getting in a twist on me. Run my tape down so I know those wires are done. Now, don't worry that that's still seen. By the time we have it all covered, it will work. Next up, I want my next shape. What My next size petals at least. All right. Add on my tape again. I'm going to pop these guys in. So bend here again. I'm holding there. That's where the wire is. So if you hold it at the top, you're going to, it can break. So I'm popping these in here. I'm going in between two petals with this one. All right. In again. And I, I don't go in a set kind of pattern for these. Um, I just kind of pop them in where they need to. You can overlap and you can underlap whatever way you're comfortable with it. All right. Guys, thanks so much for all the questions. It's really nice when everybody um, when everybody joins in and asks the questions. It's nice to know I'm not just sitting here talking to the phone. Okay, so you can see it's starting to close now a little bit. I want another one in there for sure. Now, when you're doing these for cakes, you need to remember to put in a, a note for whoever's uh, getting them. I just want to add in. One more of those lads there, just close that. So when you're um, putting these on, let's say you're doing your wedding cake, you want to be certain that don't just tell the people, like while they're made of sugar and they are edible, um, technically you wouldn't eat them because there's so much wires in them. You know, there's, there's wires in every petal. So you need to make sure that you put in a disclaimer for your customer. Um, I have a sheet typed up that goes in with all my, my flowers. It's my little just disclaimer on it. That, you know, that lets people know, look, while they're made of sugar, they're, they're, um, technically they're not really edible. Um, and you need to explain, it's a whole education thing for people that you need to say, they will keep for years, like what we were saying earlier, put them in the glass cabinet, cabinet, um, uh, put them in the glass cabinet and, you know, they keep for years on end. So it's nice if they can do it because there's, there's no greater fear than if you're at a wedding and you've made flowers on a cake and, as has happened to me, the groom takes a bite out of them. It's uh, a bit of a clench moment. <laughs> it's the danger, isn't it? So you've got to make sure you've got your disclaimer in. Um, when, now go back down. Uh, Rasika, are wires visible at the base? I tend to be scared using the tape very close to the pedal. Okay, so let me show you. 
when you put your there they shouldn't be visible at all so we're going to pop in this and i'm going to do this now on purpose can you see now here i can see the wire so all i do is i tape it as close as you're comfortable take the wire now look ta-da it's gone okay so it it then it's it's disappeared for you so just it's okay if you can see it at first tape around take that wire pull it down so it tightens it and now it's hidden okay um so carmack multi when storing all your sugar bits and pieces what is the best way i have so many parts made and i want to make sure to keep them in good condition well carl I've been making uh, cakes for, actually my business was 17 years old last week and I forgot to say happy birthday to me, but happy birthday, sweet creations. Um, so I have the bakery at the house that's full of stuff. I have the shop inside in town that's full of stuff. Then I have a spare room in the house here. This is where I make my sugar flowers. That's full of stuff. Build a few, build a few shelves, Carol. <laughs> it kind of takes over the whole place. <laughs> so how do you store okay if you've got all your sugar flowers and everything made i would go back to my cardboard boxes again or what do i have here I, I keep boxes like you see this one here that i use my dusting box and i would store petals in that it's got the sheet of bubble wrap and you can just put a piece of tissue then under it as well um and you can uh, just store them that way really in in uh in a cardboard box and just keep them all right so they can they can suck on a petal may you possibly do a tutorial on how to insert the sugar flowers and bouquets into cakes yeah lynn um i had a little bit of a disaster last friday i was doing up this I, i'll show you now if i have a minute i will show you now for sure um on how to insert them no problem at all and um, thank you from italy you're very very welcome uh, happy birthday thank you 17 i am um Great, thanks a ton. It's so nice to be able to ask you. They're, they're not naive questions at all. There is absolutely no such thing as a naive question. If you don't know the answer, just ask. It's not it's not a problem at all. So we're just tying those down. So Rashika, hopefully that makes sense now. Do it as you're comfortable with it. Once you've all your petals on then, you want to spin this down. Okay. Now it's not an airplane propeller. Remember it's sugar. So just be gentle. Treat it like a lady okay spin that down my tape is at 45 degree angle to the wire so it'll all automatically go down along okay what about a shoe box yeah you can use shoe boxes um you can use cake boxes i mean that's what we have that's what we have um okay happy birthday <laughs> I should have been in my shop celebrating. I opened my shop after years and years and years waiting. I opened my shop on the 2nd of March and I had a great opening day. And then we went into lockdown on the 13th of March and it's been closed ever since. I go in every now and again. I just sit in there, look out <laughs> and look at the stuff on the shelves. But anyway, it'll come back. So this is it. So now because they're all wired, you can open them all out and you can just play with it as you wish. To, to get it as open or as full as you want. So uh, the lady that asked me about, um, show your dusting box before we go. So it's just a cardboard box. That's it, that's my dusting box. No, it's not. That's a total lie. That's the box that I had the petals in. This is my dusting box here, which is the lid of the other box, and it just has a tissue in it. That's all. That's what I do because it stops it traveling. Now, I tell you the truth, guys, if I was doing a whole load of flowers and if I was dusting a whole lot of flowers, I would wear a face mask um, because you, you just, you snort it. There's no easy way of saying it. it it's, uh, that's what happens. I want to just find for you the, show you how I just put it into a cake. Okay, so just let me grab. So I'm not sure if I have a dummy um, just to show you here. But basically, if I was putting this into a cake, um, do I need a flower? Oh, wait, we have one. We have one, we have one. So here's the cake I made earlier. Very, very lovely cake. Okay. And basically, just let me show you. So this is a just, it's a display cake that I made and it's got the, sugar press embossers on it um, and just some different some little pieces so let's say for example I want to put the flowers standing upright in the top of the cake all right um, 
Am I posting out stuff? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I post, I'm posting out now two, three days a week and that's my limit because I'm at risk going in and also I don't want to uh, risk anybody else kind of posting out. So I'm posting out a couple of days a week. Okay, so yes, doesn't need any more colour. So you can see the little pockets. So let's say very quickly for you, I want to put the, the, the um, flower down here. You need to take a pick, cake pick. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. I'm not so sure you can. Ah, there you go. So take a cake pick. You want to insert that into the wire, into the cake, the wire, where you want the flowers to go. Your cake pick now creates a barrier between the wires and the tape and the cake. All right. So clip off the end, pop in your flowers and that's it. Let's say, for example, now, if you were bringing this cake to a party, so let's say this was a three tier um, wedding cake, what you would do is you'd line up where you want your flowers to go. So say, for example, you want your flowers at the side of a cake. I would put the cake pick in maybe at an angle. So it would go in down there, put in your flower, make sure it's right. Now, when I'm going to travel to the party, I'll take the flower out of the cake. I'll pop in little bits of tissue or, or bubble wrap here and um, just that it's safe and it doesn't chink along as it's as it's traveling. When you get to the venue, then pop it in. Done. It's absolutely it's done for you. Um, but the, the pick needs to go into the cake. It must go in to protect against from the wire and the tapes. You must put in the, the little cake pick so it's safe how do you know what size to pick it'll just depend so there's different size cake picks these are very tiny for little tiny posies and then they go right up i don't know if these are sized or how they work I, i'm not sure but there's different sizes so if i was doing a large bouquet or a large spray this would be the size that i would use and um, just depends on what you're using is that okay so that's our flower there let me just um do i have any more to show you Hang on there now, two seconds. Uh, how do I stop the cake pick disappearing? Just don't push it down the whole way down into the cake. And again, have that in your disclaimer, Lynn, um, to let the hotel or the restaurant, wherever the cake is going, to let them know what the um, what the the cake, cake pick is. And, you know, it's plastic. Is that okay? Um, so that's all of those guys there. Just let me pop this off. Ah. So, hello. Hang on there now to an awful glare. Um, so look, that's those guys here. Now, I'll put up a link. And these are some here that I also made. So you can see little cakes here. I always have to learn to go backwards. Little cakes there with the peony roses on them. This one here. Just different, uh, different colours. All right. Then the other thing, I'll put up the link for the group I was talking about. So it's called, it's Cake Artists United the global isolation room that's our that's our group there and if any of you'd like to join in you know I'll, I'll think about it we'll see um and we'll try and get you in and next friday as i say we've something very special coming up on the group on the cake artist united group um and hopefully you'll enjoy it it's something to do with flowers so we will be announcing it over the next couple of days there'll be an announcement coming up so that's it guys next week i am doing um i'm doing something on friday at the thing i'm talking about okay Shh, shh, shh. Uh, and then next Sunday night I'm doing the parrot tulip so I'll be making the tulip and the following week I'm doing the hydrangeas um, and we'll see then how we're how we're going thank you so much everybody for watching it's been a pleasure again and thank you for all your messages and for for um, coming along and joining me again this Sunday night stay safe guys and I shall talk to you during the week and remember if you have any questions rant and fire them through um, you can still add them on here and I will uh, I'll see them during the week as I go to see. Um, so yeah, thanks very much and stay safe guys. Have a great week. I'll talk to you shortly. Bye.